and welcome back everybody to the Just One More Level podcast. I'm your co-host Christian. And I'm your co-host John. And this week we played a little bit of a game called Shenzhen IO. An interesting little game. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's not like your normal sort of game. It's a game about programming and assembly, uh, which mm-hmm. is a, a a very basic kind of language. And by basic, I don't mean simple. I mean as in like as close to the actual CPUs you can get. So it's actually one of the harder types of programming in many ways. Um, it, it's a game that I picked because for any of you who don't know, I like to code and I like puzzle games. I like working with electronics. So it's just the sort of thing that I am really into. And right. I've played other Zactronics games before, but never this one. And and so I kind of wanted to torture John at, mm-hmm. while at the same time just uh, expose him to a little bit of uh, my world here. So, yeah, so that's that's why we played Shenzhen. Now, how did we feel about Shenzhen? Oh, boy. Um, oh, boy. Well, well uh, f- first of all, for uh, for for anybody that um, might be a little lost, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to try to explain this in, in layman's terms. This uh, assembly language that Christian was referring to is sort of a way to write binary code in English. Yes. Um, and if anybody doesn't know what binary code is, it's basic computer language. It's how computers and electronics talk to each other. Mm. And it's essentially like more code but for computers yeah that's kind of how computers talk to each other so that's almost exactly what it is morse code for computers yeah <laughs> so um i had an interesting experience playing this game i i have seen on the video feed right now that christian has just blazed past the thing that just got quick me note stuck. quick note yeah. I, I i do just want to point out that i ended up playing a lot more of this game than i had planned uh normally of course for anybody who's been watching you know normally we only play about an hour uh any game that we cover i ended up playing like two and a half ish hours by accident so i did just go ahead and speed up that footage so this footage is roughly two two and a half times normal speed um Mm -hmm. just wanted to get that out there i'm not that good okay (laughs) it did take me a little bit of time but uh yeah yeah (laughs) um so uh yeah for for anybody listening on uh, a podcast network that is not a video platform video based yeah um uh, essentially what you do is the game gives you these little computer chips to uh, assemble and create something out of um yep. there's a there's a user interface that has a bunch of emails from your coworkers and they ask you to design these little computer components yep. and you have to go into the game and uh, design these little computer components using chips and these little connectors and then you have to write the code on the chip that the computer is supposed to do and the game is actually forgiving in the sense that it puts a little visual of the machine that you're trying to program in the bottom right corner so you know whether or not you're being successful and then they put this little strip in the bottom where you can test your code to see if it's making the right blips that you need it to make yeah yeah basically it's kind of like an oscilloscope sort of deal where it's showing you it's a visual way of seeing the data that's going in and out of the device and so you know in theory what data is coming in because you're like running a test against it so you know what data is coming in and then you know in theory what data should be coming out so it's like running a test and then you're just matching it up with the little the little strip along the bottom um right Real quick, I do just want to interject for anybody who is wondering why this video isn't coming out during its normal Wednesday release. We missed an episode a while back because of things that were going on and we didn't want to screw up our whole schedule that we had set. And we don't expect this video in particular to blow up anyway. So we decided to just kind of make this a little midweek extra. Um, yeah. But in that time, we have since released our Bendy and the Ink Machine video. So mm-hmm. do suggest everybody check that one out. And of course, with that video, we decide to do a giveaway. So we'll mm-hmm. have that giveaway linked in the video description or podcast description, wherever you're at. So go ahead and check that out. We just want to get as many people into that as possible. So sorry to interrupt. Back right. to Shenzhen. No, you're good. Um, so for me, this was very difficult because Christian, obviously you are familiar with coding in general and probably this type of coding to some extent. Um, I, however, Barely. am not. <laughs> right. I, I have I, however, some exposure, not, but very little. Uh, yeah, familiar 
familiar with coding at all. So this game comes with a 40 page document that is called <laughs> a user manual. And in this 40 page document, they basically tell you how to just read the language in yeah. general. Like they um, they have several graphs and breakdowns, including a key, which is supposed to be a quick key. But for me, it, it still needed some deciphering. <laughs> so essentially, uh, Christian assigned me homework. <laughs> I had to I had to study this massive document uh, before I even played the game. And yep. then I had to reference it while I played the game in order to just get past the first puzzle, which is how I viewed this. I viewed it as just a very complicated puzzle to solve. Uh, it's essentially what it is. Yeah, um, it, it really, that is what it is. It's a puzzle game, but it's a puzzle game with a very specific... Uh, how would you say it? A very specific... It's a very specific kind of puzzle, right? Yes. Building small electronics, um, laying out PCBs, uh, writing the code that runs on all the different microprocessors and things like that. So, right. But at the end of the day, it is just a puzzle game. Mm -hmm. But obviously having exposure to some sort of programming helps a lot. Now, the assembly language that they give you in the game is very stripped down. You only have, oh, roughly 10 operations you can do, give or take. You have like jump commands, you have sleep command, you have like a... Uh, uh, comparators you know less than equal to greater than and then you have like addition multiplication and right. i think that's it um and then in the the beginning of the game you only have chips with like two inputs two outputs mm -hmm. and like no memory or anything like that outside of the memory on the chip you don't have like ram banks or anything like that so i'm okay. sure some of that went over your head john but yep. point is what i'm saying is this it's a very simplified uh, uh, programming assembly language and very limited number of chips. Right. But from what I understand, it does get more complicated later on, but okay. I don't believe the number of like operations really increase or anything like that. It's more about like figuring out how to arrange those few things that you already know in new mm -hmm. ways to do more and more complicated things. Uh, the prospect of which is frankly terrifying. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, go going back to the first puzzle, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my experience mm -hmm. um with trying to to get this thing to work the first puzzle is they want you to make a dummy camera uh yes. the kind of thing that you'd put outside your house to make somebody think that you have a cctv system yeah. uh but don't you just have this this little box that blinks lights one yep. of them was a uh, power light to show that the thing is turned on in the first place the other one was a modem light to show that it's transmitting data um so basically it just gives you this little graph at the bottom that says hey you need to make this first line blink uh consistently and you need to make the second line blink in a kind of randomized way like uh, like a Wi-Fi router would. Right. So uh, you ref I referenced the document and I found out that... Um, and I also reference in that one, that one was partially designed. It had a chip that had the first part done for you, which was the steady blinking. And then I referenced the document to figure out what else I should do. But I didn't actually need to. I just needed to play around with the um, sleep commands a little bit, um, which I quickly discovered. I, it was boggling my brain for a little bit because I, I quickly discovered that the sleep command is the only one that notates the passage of time. Yes. The other the other commands well, are... well. In, in at least in the first puzzle. Oh, um, yes. The sleep command is the only one that notated the passage of time. The other commands were immediate commands to switch the thing on and off. Mm -hmm. um, so once I got past that hurdle, it wasn't too bad. But at that point, I had already sunk an hour into it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, OK, that's that's good. I'm not going to try another one. That's fine. Right. It's good. It blinks. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so you did complete on. the first one then. I did complete the first puzzle. Yes. Oh, I, I mean, that's good. That's good. That's good. Dummy camera. Um but uh, to me, the bottom field, if you happen to be watching this on a video platform, the bottom field that you're seeing reminded me a little bit of like um, Guitar Hero or Beat Saber. Oh. You, just, <laughs> you just have to get the, the beats to line up, right? Right. So right. it's just a very delayed kind of Guitar Hero. Instead of playing it in a rhythm and in time, you plan out the rhythm ahead of time. So I, I looked at the bottom segment as kind of a musical thing as to relate it to something that I'm familiar with. That way I can i could kind of map out things that i wanted it to do um which helps uh it helped me a lot and um that's how i got from point a to point b but 
uh, like I said before, we don't have too much going on uh, here. So we that, that, that was another contributing factor as to why we decided to make this kind of a bonus episode for you. Because um, we figured this one might run a little shorter and uh, we wanted to keep to the schedule there. So Right. Um, um, but if, so if, you if mentioned, you though... Questions. Yeah, you mentioned, though, that the the only thing that notates passage of time is the sleep command. And mm -hmm. that is kind of true, uh, okay. except for if you have multiple chips, then they all run asynchronously. So they all run at the same time. So okay. if you are waiting for input on one chip, it can't do mm -hmm. anything until it gets that input. So it'll okay. actually freeze up waiting for input from another chip. So okay. you do like every time it jumps from one instruction to the next time is passing it just won't move on to the next step right mm -hmm. it just won't reset basically uh, back to the top unless you use the sleep command so there is okay. that and then the only other thing i wanted to mention while you were talking was you mentioned like uh, it being kind of like a tar hero right where you just have this mm -hmm. certain set of instructions that you have to or a beat that you have to match which mm -hmm. that is true in the in the first one but later on you do have where you'll receive different amounts of data and you'll have to manipulate that data and put it back out so you can't just set a program that just periodically beeps to a beat you actually have to take and manipulate data or yep. you might receive like data that says to manipulate the data this way if this is true manipulate it the other way if it's not true things like yep. that so there are much more complicated programs that you get into creating right. um where you can't just write a very simple program to match the beat but mm -hmm. in the beginning at least yeah that i mean that was essentially what they wanted you to do in the beginning one um i so, i will say um mm -hmm. just as a, as an educational experience if you really want to challenge yourself or just torture yourself right. and <laughs> you want to get into or expose yourself to aspects of basic coding in assembly or binary um i do think that the game kind of pushes you along and helps you out in in a very good way um the the document that i read the manual which you can actually reference from the game christian sent it to me externally but uh it's right there in the game yeah. um you it suggests that you print it out and put it yeah, in a binder put it in a binder yeah with uh with page tabs so you can have a very very quick reference instead of mm -hmm. playing the game in windowed mode and trying to click back and forth um so using that as reference and knowing literally nothing about computer coding i was able to successfully complete the first albeit the easiest puzzle right so if you are interested in things like this and that's something that you want to get into maybe you're interested in becoming an engineer of some kind or uh, educating yourself in that i do think this is a good gateway um yeah it's not necessarily like a very engaging time killing just for pleasure kind of game it's more it was more for me an educational experience but it accomplishes that goal very well I, yeah. I will say that for it. And I, I view it as a little bit of both, right? Like I said, I mm -hmm. enjoyed it to the point to where I ended up playing a lot more than I had planned on playing. Right. Um, but I, I do also see the value of it as an educational tool. For instance, one of the things I've been interested in, I haven't tried it yet, but been interested in for a while, is programming a classic game for like a Nintendo or a Game Boy or something like that. And right. while there are technically tools that you can use nowadays to where you don't have to use assembly language to mm -hmm. program those games that's how it would have been done back in the day was all right. through assembly now the assembly they use is a little bit more complicated than what you have in this game obviously but right. it's still a good gateway like john was saying it, it exposes mm -hmm. you to it without necessarily overwhelming you with it um the one thing I would say is I think there could have been more easy puzzles in the beginning for people who are just learning. I feel like yeah. the difficulty curve ramps up very quickly. Right. In I the was game. about to comment on that, actually, watching the video feedback of, of your experience here. I know this is sped up, but it seems like it, it gets real pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, it gets. Now, some of my time in the video is spent trying to not perfect, but but do things a little bit better, right? Because I, right. there are some things that I knew I could do with less lines of code or with less chips or whatever. So I was just trying to get a higher score, quote unquote, kind of deal. Um, right. But certainly it did get much harder very quickly. I, I can't right. argue with that. So that's one thing I feel that he could have done better. Mm -hmm. But I still think it's a great tool. And having played one other Zactronics game, that's the developer mm -hmm. and kind of the genre as well as kind of known as Zactronics games. 
Um, right. But anyways, having played one other of his games, this one accomplishes the task of getting you into assembly without overwhelming you much better than some of the earlier ones. Uh, specifically, okay. I think the one I played was TIS 1000, if I remember the name correctly. Okay. I feel like that one was much harder to kind of get into the rhythm of things. Um, right. As well as just not as interesting, because if I remember correctly, it also didn't have all like the layout of the chips and PCBs and stuff like that. So okay. that kind of yeah. added like another puzzle oh, layer. Yeah to it instead of just programming you also have to figure out how to lay everything out in a reasonable way and whatnot too so gotcha okay yeah. but i i mean it looks it looks good there's not much to talk about honestly uh, as far as graphics or story or music anything like that it's um kind of its own thing it is well done for what it is everything looks mm -hmm. very representative of oh, how yeah. it looks in real life um as far as i know i mean i'm i, I don't have a lot of experience but i i did uh build my pc with christian and i used to tear apart vcrs when i was a kid so yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems pretty spot on if we're talking if we're talking about that kind of thing so that's that's good yeah but yeah it's a um it also reminds me a little bit of redstone engineering uh just a touch because redstone in minecraft is uh its own little field of interest people yeah. sometimes just play the game to try to make uh and little contraptions and things i like think that. it's and good to point out as well that 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 redstone is used as an educational tool to get mm -hmm. children into programming and circuitry and things like that because right. it literally is like a, yeah. a redstone line is actually the same as a a, a circuit board a line on a circuit board and mm -hmm. the gates and things that you, they use are actual things that you would find in in microchips right like nor latches right. and xor latches and and gates and things like that those right. are all terms that came from engineering terms right from uh, ele electrical engineering yeah so exactly so i mean it, it really is the same thing the only difference is is that here you are also introducing programming elements to it as right. well yeah. instead of just uh, mechanical engineering mm -hmm. yeah yeah. So I would not play just one more level of Shenzhen, although I do respect it. <laughs> and I, I did not hate it as much as you uh, may have thought that I would. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I would not play just one more level of this. I, although I do have some very basic interests in coding in, in mm -hmm. general. You know, just like we've talked about on the podcast before, Christian and I played around with uh, game development before. So I've always been interested in utilizing 3D design programs and uh, the Unity engine, things like that. Just very basic level. Uh, well, I don't want to say basic, but to me, basic, more basic than this, <laughs> more mm. user friendly. <laughs> um, I I'm much more interested in going that route rather than programming tiny microchips. But right. it, it was not as uh displeasant <laughs> it was it was not as uh, uh disturbing and frustrating of an experience as i i think you you thought i might have i i have a lot more respect for it than i than i thought i was going to going into it i wasn't as frustrated so that, that that is good i would recommend it even though i wouldn't play just one more level i would recommend <laughs> it if that is something that you're trying to get into if it's something mm -hmm. that interests you if you're watching this and you're like wow that's so crazy i've always wanted to know how a circuit board was put together then uh definitely try it uh, support the developer it's on steam i believe it's relatively inexpensive 15 dollars, something like that something like I that know. i don't honestly like remember the price off the top of my head but yeah it's not super yeah. expensive and i and if i remember correctly um they have sales relatively often as well mm -hmm. um so yeah like john said well, i mean for me personally i would play just one more level um right. i'm very interested in not only programming but also microelectronics and things like that i i like to tear things apart and build things and uh, mm -hmm. i i repair consoles and things in my free time so i mean i'm just i very much like working with small electronics and things like that right. um so i probably would play just one more level but i obviously i recognize that this is not everybody's cup of tea this is not a game for everybody this right. is very much a game for people who are interested in the sorts of things that i'm interested in or mm -hmm. want to see if it is their sort of thing as well right. as maybe maybe if you are just a hardcore puzzler like if you if you're just really into puzzles yeah 
yeah. maybe you could get into this style game right. as well. So. You're you're looking for that next challenge. You've already yeah. completely inked out your Sudoku book, and right? Your yeah, book, and you just don't know what to do with yourself. Then yeah, um, <laughs> I, uh, I I enjoy puzzles in games, but I'm not like the greatest puzzler just because I I I lose focus a little bit. Hmm. So and uh, that that definitely detracts from real time strategy. So it, it always uh, it always gets me a little bit when you're talking about puzzling but i enjoy puzzles to a degree just not this degree uh, <laughs> like but, i said i i definitely understand it's not for everybody so yeah yeah um but anyway christian where can we find you yeah so i mean you can find me hopefully you can find me on twitch a little more often my pc i'm still trying to get a graphics card for my pc but i've done some tests and it seems like i can stream reasonably well with just the setup that i have now so i'm hoping to get back into doing some stuff on here uh maybe youtube no promises there but of course you can find me on our twitter page my personal twitter account and our website uh just one more podcasts.com how about you john you can find me on the social media sites instagram and twitter at the dorse man or john dorsey one i post little updates there every once in a while about the podcast and uh that's pretty much it and of course you can find me on the podcast facebook page that is yep. uh, just one more podcast on facebook it's a group and that is the best place that you can interact with us give us game suggestions um and that's also the best place that you can be updated about when we're going live on twitch or when we're doing special things like a poll which yep. is going on on the website right now for the game that you want to see us play next and giveaways like christian said towards the beginning of this episode we're giving away a copy of bending in the ink machine let us know if you want us to do stuff like that more often we'd be more than happy to we love giving back to yeah. uh the very small but dedicated audience that we have so yeah, definitely let us know this week on Just One More Level Podcast, very excited to announce that we have played Alien Isolation. That'll be the next episode coming out for you guys. I'm super excited. I'm such a huge fan. Be sure to check that out this coming Wednesday. But until then, we'd like to thank you so much for watching and supporting us. You don't have to, but you do. And we thank you for it. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. And just sorry to interrupt or what well, interject. But uh, <laughs> that poll that you mentioned, when this goes out, there will only be about one day left on that poll for what we should play next. Next, Lego mm -hmm. Star Wars on the PlayStation 2 and Middle Earth Shadow and Mordor are tied for top spot. So for hurry top. up and get your votes in. Figure out which mm -hmm. one you want us to play. If they I end up being tied, we'll, <laughs> if they end up being tied, we'll probably just have to flip a coin because right mm -hmm. after Alien Isolation, we will be playing whatever game you guys pick. So make sure you yep. get your votes in for that. Like John said, we thank you guys so much for coming out and spending your time with us. And we hope mm -hmm. to see you again Wednesday. Yep. See you guys. Bye bye, y'all.